Hi there, I'm Sinead. I'm a physiotherapist with Midwest Physiotherapy Clinic in Castle Troy in Limerick, Ireland. And I'm also a lymphedema therapist. And during this period of social isolation because of the COVID-19 virus, most people with lymphedema are gonna to have to do their own treatment, which is a huge opportunity to become self-sufficient with your lymphedema treatment. And maybe to understand the reasons why we do certain massage techniques and maybe even tailoring them totally to suit what works for you. So it's a really good opportunity. So let's take it. So I'm going to do a series of videos called Lymphedema DIY. And this is the first one. It's to talk about the workings of the lymphatic system. There's a lot about the lymphatic system on the internet. So this is one more video. So excuse my shiny drawing board and my drawing, if you don't mind. Okay, so the first thing um, to say is that we don't all stay the same size every day. There is a very complex fluid system that maintains the volume of our limbs, our torsos, our head and neck, all of those things. And I suppose we particularly notice maybe in hot weather that we're more swollen um, or we might notice on certain drugs such as steroids that that kind of that fluid balance system gets a little bit affected and that's all got to do with um, amongst other things your lymphatics so every day the average adult it is estimated um, shifts about four liters of fluid through their lymphatic system now the thing about the lymphatic system so it's by it's it's basically the waste products from your cells so all your cells in your bodies be they muscle cells kidney cells lung cells whatever nose cells um, they all do their work and produce byproducts, so trash if you like. Um, and then this kind of allows fluid, so the, the cells actually secrete fluid and actually dump it outside the cell boundaries into what we call the extracellular matrix. So it lies outside the cells, but it's not yet able to access your circulatory system. And until it does access your circulatory system, i.e. your blood, your heart, all those kind of things, then it can't ac actually be excreted through your kidneys. So it needs to access that system in order for you to be able to excrete the fluid out. So that's where your lymphatics come in. So lymphatics are, to some extent, a little bit like veins. They're like vessels that run along in your limbs almost like veins, and they collect any excess fluid from your limbs, from your internal organs, um, and bring it back to the circulatory system. So, for example, here we have a leg, believe it or not. This is this person's right leg. And there's veins running up along that leg, but these black things are gonna be your lymphatic. So they're kind of like veins, small little things that run up, little tubes, they collect all the excess fluid. There's a couple of lymph nodes at the back of your knee. But basically most of the fluid is brought up to your lymph nodes, which are like P-shaped structures in your groin. Okay. And the same with left leg. Little tubes, lymphatics. There's a few of them around the knee and then there's more of them and eventually most of the fluid ends up being sifted through the nodes in your groin. So your groin and your lower abdomen is full of nodes that not only deal with the fluid from your legs but also from things like your bowel, your um, any of the the organs in your lower abdomen, basically your urinary ones, your sexual organs, all of that. Okay, so you have a whole system there, okay? So from there, larger vessels, again like veins, they actually join together, form a large vessel called the cisterna chile, then that runs on upwards into the long thoracic duct, and eventually, and we're gonna put two big blood vessels here, the vena cava veins, Two big blood vessels in red. Two big blood vessels in red. Okay, so those are the veins that we want to, to get to. So the long thoracic duct eventually goes into that vena cava there on 
the left hand side. So you'll notice the two legs go towards the left. <clears throat> I don't know why. Design fault, maybe? God? Um, anyway, so there we go. And then what about that left arm? Well, there's a little kind of lymphatics coming up along there. These all go up towards a whole set of lymphatics. The vessels on the left hand arm, so the vessels in your left arm all lead up towards the lymph nodes in your axilla or your armpit. And from there, they'll go up to that superior vena cava, okay? So they go through the armpit, the nodes there, and then into the vena cava. And then your right arm and the right part of the torus are there, slightly different. They have their own little system, although there is a bit of a crossover, but basically you have these small vessels going directly into the vena cava, but all the fluid from the right arm, or at least most of it, is going through these lymph nodes in the armpit and then from there into the vena cava, okay? So you're starting to see the pattern here, loads of lymph nodes in the groin area, loads of lymph nodes in the armpit area. What we're missing is loads of lymph nodes in the neck area, okay? So all along the base of your skull and all along, I'm gonna just put a whole load of them everywhere. There's just zillions of them up around the neck, okay? Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of lymph nodes. Okay, and eventually these will gain access to the vena cava. So that is your deep lymphatic system. Imagine there's a problem with some of those lymphatics. So imagine your right arm, you had a right breast removed and some of your armpit nodes were taken out with the surgery and also you had radiation done to them so they're no longer, basically any of those that are left are no longer working. So let's just knock these out of the equation. These lymph nodes no longer working. So basically the fluid that seeps out of the cells in our right arm and moves up now kind of gets to the armpit area but there's no nodes for it to kind of be processed if you know what I mean. So it has two choices. <clears throat> it can either stay where it is in the arm and you get a very swollen arm or some of the other nearby lymphatics take up the slack, okay? Now, if you have really good lymphatics naturally, so we, we all have a range of having good or poor lymphatics. Some people have really sluggish lymphatics and it just runs in their family, okay? And other people have really, really good lymphatics and you know, they never put on an ounce of weight, they never carry extra fluid, they don't bloat, all of those kind of things. So lucky them. So their lymphatics just take up the slack. So basically, you have all these lymphatics in the groin, these deep lymphatics in the groin, okay? So this is the deep system. You have all these deep lymphatics in the groin, in the other armpit, in the neck area, and these actually take up the slack. They will actually do the work, even though these ones in the armpits are gone. So let's say, for example, I'm going to make up a figure. Let's say 20% of your lymph nodes were taken out here. Okay. You're left with 80%. And that 80% do a pretty good job. So once the fluid from your arm can actually get out of the arm and get anywhere near your neck or your torso, it'll actually be reabsorbed by your the other 80% of the lymphatics. Okay. So for some people, they never get lymphedema because they're good lymphatics. Um, also, one of the things we know um, kind of puts more strain on lymphatics is, is if you're carrying extra weight. So it's really important if you can do anything about extra weight that you do, because it'll make a big difference. And there are a, co a couple of other factors, but probably weight. And sometimes as people get older, their lymphatics slow down. But most of the time, the 80% that are left behind, they can do the work as long as excess fluid can make its way along the skin of your arm up towards your neck or into your torso that will then be reabsorbed and you won't end up with a lymphedema problem. The problem often happens if the rest of your lymphatics gets overloaded, okay? So for whatever reason, maybe eventually with the course of time, it could be three or four years later, that 80% of lymphatics has just had an extra volume of fluid flowing through it 
and it finally gets to the stage where the, those lymphatics themselves, the pipes get a bit sluggish, slow down from the extra volume of fluid and then they kind of, they kind of get clogged and blocked themselves. So when they get clogged and blocked themselves, then even if the fluid coming out of your right arm can get to these other lymphatics, they're starting to get blocked themselves. They're starting to get overworked. So it can't process the fluid from your arm and therefore you get arm edema. Sometimes it can be when you go on a long haul flight or you're in very hot weather that there's just an excess of fluid actually formed to start with. So there's extra fluid under atmospheric pressure or in heat that actually is caused to, to form anyway in all of us. So sometimes that's the kind of the thing that kicks it off or sometimes it could be that you had a really bad flu and your lymphatics had to work really hard to fight that flu and then they got a bit sluggish and then your, your, your lymphedema kicked off. So in the next video, I'm actually going to show you how to do some uh, self-massage on your deep lymphatics because in my opinion, if you keep your deep lymphatics in good working order, your chances of having a good outcome from wearing a garment or doing self-massage are vastly improved. So meet me in the next video.